Hey there, YouTube. So when I got up this morning, it's right now it is 12.24 p.m. Pacific time. I woke up probably maybe 11 a.m. or something like that. So what I do when I wake up in the morning, usually I go right to isthisthingon.org and earthquake.usgs.gov. It's, it's like a 30-second check. It takes like 30 seconds. I just go on there, see if anything major happened, and then get off, do what I have to do in the morning, and then, you know, report about it if I have to. So this morning, I was interested to see that we do have an earthquake swarm at Yellowstone. And they're not all just little teeny, teeny, tiny guys. I'm probably saying maybe 1.8 to 2.3 magnitudes. I'm saying a good amount of them are pretty good sized. And not too many. There's not too many. But what we're going to do just real quick is we're just going to look at this. Oh, there was a recent 6.0, now downgraded to a 5.9. Um, I don't know why they did that. Sorry if I'm a little confusing right now, guys. I am still kind of groggy. I had a late night last night. So, yeah, kind of tired still. And, oh, by the way, we had an earthquake in, what was it, the Philippines. A 6.0 in the Philippines at 598 kilometers in depth, which is pretty deep, guys. That's very deep. I think the deepest earthquake ever to occur was, like, 720 kilometers in depth or something something like that if anybody knows the deepest earthquake to ever occur just let me know i mean I, I could probably you know what you know what let's see if i can search it let's see what it says i can just do it right now deepest earthquake to occur in world strongest deep focus earthquake and seismic record was a magnitude 8.3 at the Okhotsk sea Earthquake that occurred at a depth of 609 kilometers in 2013. The deepest earthquake ever recorded was a small <clears throat> 4.2 earthquake in Vanuatu at a depth of 735 kilometers in 2004. How come all the deep earthquakes are happening in like the 2000s? You notice that? Very weird. Very, 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 very weird. So real quick, what we're going to do is we're going to just analyze the swarm real quick. I haven't done this yet. I have not, because I, I just woke up just a little bit ago, I have not done this yet. So you will be seeing what I am seeing, pretty much. What is it? The, yeah, it's the fourth. So let's just do zero, 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 zero. This is the data select data downloader URL builder thingamabob. This is where I get all my uh, seismic data from. Okay. And by the way, I am in the process of making my monthly volcano update i'm doing the monthly volcano update for october because i haven't done one for october yet i will upload that either tonight or tomorrow night <clears throat> okay let's see right now it's 12 27 p.m pacific time so since daylight savings time happened last night that means that is now let's see 1 p.m pacific time after daylight savings ends would be 2100 utc so this would be 20 27 zero, zero, zero ah come on Zero, zero. There we go. 2018, 11 Okay. We got YMC EHC, which is the station that is probably picking this event up the best. And yeah, let's just go with YMC just real quick. So after downloading the file from the data select website, which uh, I will try to put a link to it. Yeah, I think I'll be able to put a link to it in the description box below. Please go check that out. I will post that. If it's not there, all you have to simply do is go to my website, https colon slash slash monitorsize.weebly.com, which the link is automatically in the description box below. Anyways, <clears throat> sorry if, again if I'm a little confusing because I am still kind of groggy. Just recently woke up, sort of. So here is the data file that we downloaded, YMC. Now let me move this over here real quick and let me move this down here. There we go. All right, so let's move forward. Let's see, don't know what that is. I think this right here is a teleseism. Nope, that's a regional earthquake. Probably up in Montana or Utah or something. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Oh, that's my bad. Turn off. I hate persistent rescale, by the way. I hate that. I always have it unchecked. I do not like it. We had some rhythmic microquakes in the beginning, and then we had two microquakes here. Not going past 4,000 amplitude count. Let's check out the spectrogram real quick. Mid-frequencies. Let's go check the spectra real quick. <clears throat> okay. Below 10 hertz. Now, for something to be categorized as a low-frequency earthquake, I'm pretty sure the dominant frequencies have to be below 5 hertz. I'm pretty sure. But I've never heard, so far, I remember, I'm still learning about all this stuff. Remember, I so far, I have not heard if there's such a thing as a mid-frequency earthquake. 
There's low frequency earthquakes. There's high frequency earthquakes, which usually high frequency earthquakes usually go to about 20, 25 hertz. So this is not a high frequency earthquake. But this is not a low frequency earthquake either, because I thought low frequency earthquakes had to be below 5 hertz, usually. But this is below 10 hertz, with a little bit going past 10 hertz, probably about to about 13 hertz. So it's very interesting. And whoops, let me turn that back on. So this is these are mid frequency earthquakes. I'm just going to use the spectrogram first just to see if there's any low frequency earthquakes. Those are very tiny earthquakes right there. <clears throat> okay, let me turn that on. Okay, very interesting beginning. Very interesting. Look at that. That is very odd. Let me go. Let me zoom back in. And right about there. That's a very interesting P wave. Huh. That is very weird. And it does show lower frequency right at the beginning. That's very weird, huh? Then we got these three right here. Let's zoom in real quick. Not too strong. Let's go over. Multiple earthquakes happening in rapid succession, guys. Usually, we do not see rapid succession earthquake swarms like this over here in Maple Creek. But this is very interesting because at West Thumb, you know, we have had those rapid succession earthquake swarms. If you want to check it out, you can go to my website. I have posted many blog posts about it because they're one of the main seismic events at Yellowstone that are fascinating to me because uh, I don't – definitely not tectonic activity. I mean, I'm not talking about this, but at West Thumb, those rapid succession earthquake swarms, to me, do not look like tectonic activity. But this is very interesting. Usually the earthquakes are a little more spread out near the Maple Creek area. I do not usually see them occurring in such a small space of time. Let me zoom in on that. That one had a very interesting P wave as well. These are some very interesting earthquakes. Look at that. They don't even look like earthquakes. They look like blobs. That, huh. That is very weird. So let's continue. Let's keep going. Looks like we had three separate events. Two were very small. Here's the first event. Let's go over. Here's the other two events. Not seeing much. Not not seeing any low frequency earthquakes, which is a good. Oh, we had some earthquakes up here too. These are weird. These are very very weird. Let me go to the spectrogram. Yeah, that looks like two separate events actually right there. Okay, so these earthquakes look very peculiar. Just weird, guys. This one goes all the way past 30,000 amplitude count. I'm going to guess this is probably one magnitude 1.9 earthquake or so. <clears throat> oh, man, I think I am sick. Oh, that sucks. So let's just go forward one frame by frame. Not much there. Looks like it calmed down a little bit. Oh, here's the other larger earthquake. I'm going to guess, let's see, went past 30,000. I'm going to say this one was actually probably a 2.4, I'm going to say. And University of Utah still is not reporting them yet because I think they're off on Sundays. I think today's Sunday. So today's Sunday, right? Let me see. Yep, Sunday, November 4th. Yep. Oh, what is this? That's interesting. That doesn't look like an earthquake. Huh. 1720. Now, guys, this is just preliminary. This is just preliminary because I just am now looking at the data with you right now. <clears throat> but I will post a blog post about this event if it gets worse. So go ahead and keep an eye out for that. Um, this is pretty much the most recent data as of 12.26 p.m. Pacific Time, which would be 1.26 p.m. Mountain Time. Right now it's 12.37 p.m., so we have only about 10 minutes missing at the end because this has been taking me about 10 minutes to do this. Now, this is weird. Check this out. What the heck is this? What are these? What is that? That is the weirdest signal I think I've ever seen. Well, except for, like, electronic signals. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do just real quick, you might not be able to see it very well, but let's do YHH to see if those picked up on the local seismograph, see if it picked up on any neighboring graphs. Go to file, open file, let me open the last one. YHH, here we go, here's YHH. Okay, 
Let me see here. So this occurred at about 1930 or so. So I'm going to put that to the side. Okay, so that occurred about 1930 or so. 1930, nope. Nope, not shown on surrounding seismographs. Nope. This is the Teleseism. Let's see, 1937, give or take a few minutes for the earthquake to reach. 1937, 1926, this earthquake occurred. And Japan, 5.9, 6.0, I bet, at 8.0 kilometers in depth. Lots of people felt it. Definitely was that Teleseism. It would take about 10 minutes or so to reach Yellowstone. And so, yeah, these signals right here are uh, shown on YMC are not showing on YHH. So these could be electronic malfunctions. I, I don't know. I don't know what they are, but they are not showing on surrounding uh, seismic stations. These, however, are the bigger earthquakes. Even all the way to YHH, it shows about 10,000 amplitude count. So these are some pretty good-sized earthquakes, multiple ones. So we do have a swarm, but... It's nothing big. It's not a big swarm, but I bet you anything it will increase. Unless this is just it. And it was just a weird sporadic burst of earthquakes. So we will keep a closer eye on this. I will, uh, I have to do my video tonight. I'm going to be editing my October 2018 update video. So keep an eye out for that. It will be uploaded tonight or tomorrow night. And I think that's it, guys. <clears throat> so we checked out the spectrograms and everything. So I, if this gets worse, I will make a separate video about it and a blog post. So keep an eye out on my channel and my website for that as well. And if you guys haven't seen my past two videos about that weird, weird, huge, just massive C5 galaxy. I think it was a C5 galaxy. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was. But it was circling for over an hour, right over my house. So that means it was circling over Bothell, Kirkland, and Totem Lake, which is very weird. I mean, it could have been circling in other areas as well, but uh, I didn't travel to go see where it was. But it circled multiple times, saw it multiple times, over and over and over and over, got on video a couple times. The thing was loud at times. It was getting very close to the active flight paths. Literally, a flight went, like, right over it. At one point, it was only like a few thousand feet difference, which I thought during drills and during practices and stuff like that, I thought they coordinate with flight paths because where you I'm, I come from a military family and, and plus I live near uh, I live in Bothell and we can pretty much see the air traffic for both Payne Field and SeaTac here. So we're used to airplane activity every day. We're used to seeing the Dreamlifter, which brings in parts for the Dreamliner for Payne Field. We're used to seeing all that crap. We're used to seeing all military activity every now and then, you know. I even saw a few stealth bombers a few months ago. It was pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> they were way high up there, 32,000 feet. But this was peculiar. The way it was acting, it was acting very erratically. I mean, sometimes banking and taking tight, tight turns, flying over really low at some points. And one person said it was because of the UW versus Stanford, uh, was it football game? Is that true? If anybody out there knows that they flew over a C-17 or a C-5 galaxy over, which that wouldn't make any sense because, number one, we had low, low cloud cover yesterday. So at times, it was hard to see this plane at times. Sometimes it was cutting in and out of the, out of the clouds, but we did have low cloud cover. And number two, since when do they bring a C-5 galaxy, one of the most advanced, biggest military transports in the world, to fly over a college football game college guys and not professional college i'm talking about uw versus stanford because one guy did say that and i was like you know that is interesting but to me that doesn't make any sense especially why would it circle for an hour if it was a simple flyover they do it a few times and go if they were bringing supplies from here to the border or any of that they would just go they would not circle for an hour and now if you guys understand an hour is a long time to circle guys but obviously nothing happened, you know, and nothing bad was going to happen. It was both me, we had some family over, both me and my family were both excited and nervous at the same time. So it was pretty cool to see that. Then, But then again, we understand what drills are and how, how military aircraft, uh, how they behave during drills. This was weird. It's nothing like I've ever seen before, unless they're just not caring about the flight paths anymore. I even had someone comment on one of those uh, videos about the C5 Galaxy or the C17, whatever it was. And they said that they live up near Payne Field in Everett, uh, which is not too far from me, actually. And they said that it's it's weird. It's just not normal. And the people that live around here know that it's not normal. 
Like people could say what they want, but the way it was acting was just weird, guys. Very interesting. So I don't think we'll ever know what happened to that. I think I might email Woodby Island Naval Air Base to see uh, what was going on. But I thought it was funny though that it could be because of the UW versus Stanford game. <clears throat> I mean, geez, does Stanford have a CIA hookup? Kind of like in the TV show Chuck. <laughs> Well, I've gotten kind of off topic, guys, so we will keep an eye on this uh, uh, very closely. I will check back with you guys soon. I'm about to go edit my October 2018 update. All right. I love y'all. Thank y'all for all you do. Remember, the truth is hater fear, or the truth is considered hater fear to those who hate or fear the truth. Please hope that I feel better because I hate being sick. I hate colds. You can probably hear I'm a little stuffly, snuffly. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. See you soon.